Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, February 12, 2023. I'm Rev. Mary Tillman, an Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. We're still in the winter quarter, and the quarter study is Chosen, Not Choice. Unit 3, our theme is God's Call and Its Responsibilities. This is lesson number two in unit number three. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is called With a Holy Calling. And in the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults, the lesson title is Trust and Encouragement. Devotional reading, John chapter 15 verses one through 14. The background scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 3 through 14 and the print passage is also 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 3 through 14. Our key verse is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 13 from the NIV Bible it reads, What you heard from me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we come today thanking you for your many blessings and thanking you for this lesson, realizing that you chose us and some of our assignments are not by choice, but we realize, dear God, that you are in control and it is our desire to live a life that is pleasing to you and purposeful for the reason for which we were created. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray, amen. This week's lesson is Paul's final letter and it is filled with emotions as he encourages Timothy to embrace the sufferings that accompanies the gospel, which is the responsibility of those who are called with a holy calling. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, pen and notepad and follow along as we go forward with this wonderful and very personal lesson. Let's get started. Again, the title of our lesson is Trust and Encouragement. The three questions to consider in this lesson, question number one, why was Paul's relationship with Timothy so special? Question number two, what power has God given us through the power of the Holy Spirit? And question number three, what did Paul urge Timothy to do that we are to do as well? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. Paul and Timothy are the key characters in this week's lesson. Let's look at Paul first. Paul was born Saul of Tarsus. He was commonly known as Paul the Apostle. He was a Christian apostle, although not one of the original 12 apostles who spread the teachings of Jesus in the first century world and is regarded as one of the most important figures of the apostolic age. He founded several Christian communities in Asia Minor and in Europe. When we look at Timothy, he grew up in the town of Lystra, the son of a Jewish woman named Eunice and a Greek Gentile father who is not mentioned by name. Timothy was raised as a Gentile and was spiritually adopted by the Apostle Paul. Timothy accompanied Paul throughout the Mediterranean Sea area and eventually became an ordained evangelistic minister. There are two New Testament letters bearing his name, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Timothy joined Paul during one of Paul's later missionary journeys. Paul addressed Timothy as my true son in the faith. That we'll see that in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 2 in the NIV version. Timothy was spiritually adopted by the Apostle Paul. He had been Paul's traveling companion on the second and third missionary journeys. Timothy had been a faithful servant to Paul. Timothy served as Paul's representative to several churches, and he was later a pastor at Ephesus. Timothy maintained his trust in the Lord and lived in obedience to the teachings given to him by Paul. Paul wrote to the young leader Timothy in the church of Ephesus to provide him encouragement and fortitude 
in the face of difficulties and trials. The books of 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus are known as the pastoral epistles. They consist primarily of pastoral advice on dealing with problems in churches in both Ephesus and in Crete. These three epistles have a lot in common with each other. The Apostle Paul is the author of 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. 2nd Timothy is the final epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote. Paul was writing this letter from a prison in Rome. He was imprisoned for preaching the gospel and knew he would die soon. He's in a dungeon in prison awaiting his death. As Paul was waiting to die, he wrote a letter to his dear friend Timothy, a younger man who was like a son to him. This week's lesson is in 2 Timothy. Paul's second letter to Timothy was written to him about two to four years after his first letter. The purpose of 2 Timothy was to give final instructions and encouragement to Timothy. By the way, fast forward to today. Can you think of someone who would benefit from receiving a letter of encouragement from you? Maybe it's a son or a daughter, a grandchild, a co-worker, a friend, a Sunday school teacher, a deacon, or even our pastor. Cards and letters have a way of uplifting spirits and giving folk the encouragement or the courage to make it through another day. I suggest you send someone a card or a letter this week. You'll feel good and they'll feel even better. Oh yeah, a phone call will do just as well. The aims for this week's lesson. Examine the holy callings of Paul and Timothy. Since the reassurance that is given to those whom God calls, identify and receive the good treasure that God entrusts. As we continue into the study of this lesson, there are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is Remember the Call, Work, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. The second outline is Work the Call. Do, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. The third outline is Embrace the Call, 2 Timothy 1, verses 11 through 14. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline. Outline number one, Remember the Call, Work, 2 Timothy 1, verses 3 through 6. These verses read as follows. This is Paul talking. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. For this reason, verse number six, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Paul was writing from a Roman prison dungeon. He had been in prison for preaching the gospel and was now being treated as a common criminal. Yet, amidst the predicament, Paul had an attitude of praise and an attitude of thanksgiving, as we read in verse number three. Paul began by thanking God. Despite the situation he was in, Paul began this letter with, I thank God. Even in prison, Paul could say, I thank God. Paul leaves an incredible example for us concerning how to face trials and tribulations. In, in everything, the Bible says, give thanks. Not for everything, but in everything, we should give thanks to God. Key point number one, 
we must never forget that God is still God in the good times and in the bad times. And he is God on my mountains and in the valley of life. Paul goes on to say in verse 3 that Paul's ancestors worshipped and sought to serve God. So Paul could, with a clear conscience, state that his service for the Lord was according to the example of his ancestors. Paul now focuses on the unceasing remembrance of Timothy in his prayers, night and day. Paul constantly pay, prayed for Timothy. In verse 4, we reiterate, Recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. Paul had a yearning to see Timothy again. In verse 5, it says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you. Timothy had a godly mother and a godly grandmother. In fact, he had a godly heritage. Verse 6 reads, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. We used to sing a song a few years ago called Stir Up the Gift. And when the gift of God is stirred up in you, you have no problems doing what God has called you to do. Key point number two. It's not enough to simply possess the gifts of God. We must stir up the gifts that God has given us and act on them. Paul wanted Timothy to continue in those things he had learned, drawing on the rich heritage of faith that had been passed down to him as a young pastor, not just from Paul, but also from his mother and grandmother. Because of his family's godly background and his own faith, Timothy was urged to stir up the gift of God which was already in him. Timothy had been called into Christian service and had been given a special gift, the gift to Timothy with the laying on of hands of the Apostle Paul. Thus, the Apostle Paul was the channel through which the gift was conferred. Each of us has a special gift from God. It is what makes us unique and unequivocally invaluable to kingdom building. We are not here by accident to just occupy space. We have an assignment, a responsibility, if you will, to fulfill the purpose of our calling. The question is, are we ready for the task? Are you ready and willing to do what God has purposed for you in your life? Outline number two, work the call. Do. This outline requires action, and we see that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 through 10. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Key point number one, God has given us the power and strength to stand strong against these difficulties, challenges, and trials. Paul reminded Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear or cowardice. On this Christian journey, we will be faced with challenges, tough times, and trials, but God has given us a spirit of power. He has also given us a spirit of love. This love for God casts out fear and makes us willing to give ourselves to Christ. 
Finally, God has given us a spirit of a sound mind, a spirit of self-control. We must use discretion and not act rashly, hastily, or foolishly. Regardless of our circumstances, we should maintain balanced judgment and act soberly. This is not easy to do when emotions are running rampant, but as children of God, we must not act too hastily. It will cause more harm and do no good. Self-control has so much value. Trust me. Key point number two. Unlimited strength is at our disposal through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Verse 8 reads, So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Here Paul admonished Timothy not to be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. During this period, preaching the gospel was a crime and those who attempted to witness publicly for their Lord and Savior were persecuted. Paul affirmed that the Spirit gives us the power to be bold with our words. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to love those who mock and persecute us. The Holy Spirit helps us to live a disciplined life and a life of holiness. Through the Spirit, we can stand against temptation and persecution. Paul said to Timothy, he must not give up, he must not quit, or quiet his witness because he had the Spirit, and the Spirit of God would empower him. Verse number 9 reads, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. And verse 10 reads, But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Paul stresses that God saved us and called us with a holy call, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This clearly ties in with this quarter's theme, chosen, not choice, and the notion that our salvation is rooted in grace and not human merit. Also, in verse 9, Paul states that God saved us. Saved us from what? We are saved from eternal death, eternal punishment in hell through the gospel. We are also saved from slavery to sin, the world, and Satan. We are now slaves of Christ and righteousness. The gospel is the message of salvation. God saves sinners and makes them his people exclusively by his grace and not by anything else or by anything that they have done. Before the world was created, God planned to give people eternal life, but this gift becomes theirs only through Christ's victory over death on the cross. And I want to stick a pen right here and note that if you've been participating in our Wednesday night Bible study, I'm sure you recognize the fact that we are saved from eternal death through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we've been studying that in the book of Ephesians. Read it at your leisure. Outline number three. Embrace the call. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 11 through 14. Paul was appointed as an apostle, but he suffered greatly during his ministry. However, as Paul wrote to Timothy, his tone was upbeat as he explained that he considered it a privilege to suffer for the gospel until the day he would see Jesus. Verses 11 and 12 read thusly, And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, 
because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. Paul shares how God uniquely called him to proclaim the gospel. Paul was a teacher of the word. Paul explains his ministry as a preacher, apostle, and teacher to the Gentiles is a divine appointment and God-given mission. Given all that Paul suffered during his ministry, he could have expressed despair and defeat in this letter to Timothy, but instead he gives no hint of regret or despair. Paul encourages Timothy with his own testimony and his example of faith and his steadfast perseverance in spite of the difficulties. Even in prison, Paul knew that God was still in control. Isn't it wonderful to know that God is in full control regardless of the situation and what it might look like? Key point number one, we can trust God fully no matter what setbacks, circumstances, or problems we face. Paul had lost all his material possessions and was about to lose his life, but he would never lose his faith. Paul trusted God to use him regardless of his circumstances. Paul entrusted his life to God and he was sure that in life and in death he was safe. Why was he so sure? Because he knew in whom he had believed in. If your situation looks bleak and dim and dark, give your concerns to Christ. Trust him. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen and amen. Verse 13 reads, What you heard from me keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. The apostle offered Timothy the example of his own life as an example for him to follow. Timothy must not just be loyal to the truth of God's word, but he is to adhere to the proper way to communicate God's word. In other words, everything Timothy would teach should harmonize with the outline given to him by Paul. Verse 14 says, Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you, guarded with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. The message of God's redeeming love had been committed to or entrusted to Timothy, and he was not to add to it or improve on it in any way. His responsibility was to guard it through the Holy Spirit who dwelled within him. Paul wanted Timothy to continue in those things he had learned, drawing on the rich heritage of faith that had been passed down to Timothy, not just from Paul, but from his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois. Key point number two. God wants us to stand true to his word. Timothy was urged by Paul to allow the Holy Spirit to help him to guard the good thing that was placed in him. Paul was admonishing Timothy to stand true to the word of God. Our task, as was Timothy's, is to not hinder or alter the gospel message. We are to embrace and pass the gospel on. Timothy was to see to it that the Christian belief was maintained in all its purity and that false teachings and misleading ideas were not allowed to enter in any way. In life, there will be times when you will stand up for the gospel for your beliefs and your convictions. Standing firm on your belief is not easy to do. We must rely on the Holy Spirit to help us persevere in the faith. For we are taught and having done all to stand, stand, stand firmly on what you have been taught 
Stand firm on your beliefs. Stand up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. In summary, we all have a holy calling from God for his glory. He has a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. We must hold on to our faith regardless of what we might have to endure in this life. Paul gives us the example in this text of exercising faith in the face of suffering and persecution. Paul relied on the Holy Spirit's help in persevering in his faith. Likewise, we must not get deterred from our assignments by the cares and weights and negativity of the world. We have a responsibility to faithfully pass on the gospel to the next generation. God has called and gifted believers to do more than preach the gospel. Some are called to teach, some are called to organize, some help and encourage, some evangelize, some sing, but all are called to serve. Paul's admonishment to Timothy to keep sound teaching is relevant today because many people have itching ears. To keep sound teaching, we must rely on the Holy Spirit. Only God's Spirit can enable us to keep the pattern of sound words. We must rely on the Holy Spirit to help us discern what is false. We must rely on Him to enable us to teach God's Word and correct misinterpretations of it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 from the NIV Bible says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. God wants us to complete the task to which he has called us to do, but we must be sure that we are approved unto God, a worker that needs not be ashamed, to rightly divide the word of truth. What are the gifts with which you believe God has blessed you with? When we put our trust in Jesus, we have the assurance that we can accomplish what he has called us to do. My closing thought and question. God has placed spiritual mentors in our lives to guide and encourage us. They help us learn to grow in our maturity in Christ. We thank God for them. They are there to help us on the Christian journey, just as Paul encouraged Timothy. And my question, who are some of the people who have helped shape your growth and development as a Christian? I hope you've gotten a thought from the lesson. I hope you've seen yourself in this lesson as either Paul the encourager or as Timothy, the one who needs to be encouraged. Be encouraged to know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8 and 28. Let's be sure that we don't alter the word of God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the living example that your servant, the Apostle Paul, was to the church. May we live in such a way that when death draws close to us, we will be concerned to see that your gospel continues to be proclaimed. Now, Father, we stir up the gifts that you have given us to better be doers of your calling on our lives, for it is our desire to please you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus our Christ. And the church said, Amen.